somebody uh, lost a hat. That is unfortunate. There's somebody out here that's having really bad luck with their hats. This is the second hat I found on my trailer run today. What's going on, people? Keep them on your head. This little thing is so much fun. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Insta360 ONE X2 action camera. The Insta360 ONE X2 is not Insta360's first camera. They actually had the Insta360 ONE X that was, came out a few years ago. I actually owned that as well. I don't have it now to compare to this one, but that was a really fun camera. The only issue I had with that camera is that it wasn't waterproof and the places I was taking it, were kind of risky, like ice climbing or running in the rain or getting too sweaty with it in my vest. It just seemed like I was risking the device overall. And that's where they made a welcome change with the Insta360 ONE X2 in making this waterproof to 10 meters, which is great. So you don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm on my usual trail here and we've got a bit of a problem. <laughs> I don't really, uh, probably a couple feet deep. Should we check? This thing's waterproof, right? I've also reviewed the Insta360 ONE R in the past, which is a modular camera from Insta360, which means you can pop off the 360 module and put on a regular kind of action GoPro look. That was a really great camera, but I really only enjoyed using it in 360 degree mode. And that's why I'm really excited to have the Insta360 ONE X2 because it's only a 360 degree camera and that's really what makes it so much fun. I do wanna let you know that Insta360 did send this camera out to me for the purpose of this video. I did not pay for this camera, but this is not a sponsored video and I'm allowed to share my honest opinion with you and that's what I intend to do. If you are interested in picking up the Insta360 ONE X2, I will have links down in the description and those do help support my channel, but they don't cost anything extra to you. And finally, if you find this video helpful or it brings value to your life, please consider hitting the thumbs up and subscribe button down below. It helps out my channel more than you know. So what is the Insta360 ONE X2? This is a 360 degree action camera. That means it's capturing everything around it all the time. This essentially means you don't really need to frame your shot. You don't have to worry about where the camera is when you're using it. You actually use the phone app, I'll show you in a little bit, to crop in on the image in post and then kind of reframe your shot in real time. It's really awesome stuff. You can also use this as a regular 360 cam where you can post this on things like Facebook or YouTube and the viewer can actually pan around your shot. I don't find it terribly useful in that situation. So how does the 360 camera work? Well, as you can see here, we've got a lens on the front here and if you flip it over, we've also got a lens on the back. And both of these cameras have a 180 degree field of view, which essentially they meet in the middle and the camera kind of disappears from itself. And what's even funner is if you use the uh, invisible selfie stick from Insta360, that screws into the bottom here. And because it's the same thickness as the camera, when you have it extended, uh, the entire stick disappears from the shot. This invisible selfie stick gives you the most mind-blowing footage. It essentially looks like a tiny drone is flying around you with the best pilot ever. It's really amazing stuff. In looking at the hardware, it's a really odd shaped camera. It's kind of like a candy bar. My only issue with the design is that if you place it down on a table, you end up putting it right on the lens, which is kind of unfortunate. That's where this little thing comes into play. This is not included in the box, but it's uh, an accessory you can buy. It's actually a little lens cap that's rubber that just kind of pops on the top here. So this way you can kind of throw it in your backpack or in your running vest or whatever, and you don't have to worry about it. Inside the box, Insta360 also includes this little pouch, which you can also use instead of that rubber cap. This does protect the camera, but it's a little bit trickier to get on and off. It's not quite as quick. Uh, I prefer the rubber cap overall. The Insta360 ONE X also didn't have a display on it so you couldn't see what was going on while you're using the camera and that's one nice thing about the Insta360 ONE X2. As you can see here there's a small round display that's kind of crazy. It looks like you're kind of looking through a port on a submarine window or something and you can actually touch the screen and pan around the 360 image which is pretty wild. You can see my face there. It looks pretty crazy. This is also how you interface with the camera and make all your settings and changes. You can see at the bottom here it says 5.7K at 24P. I can click on that and I can change it to 4K or I can go all the way down to 3K at 100 frames per second for slow-mo, which is pretty cool. At 4K, you can go up to 60 frames per second, and at 5.7K, you can only do 30 or 24 frames per second. Swiping down from the top gets you into the settings menu. You can change what format you want your video to be in, whether it's in 
360 mode or steady cam mode. When you use the camera in steady cam mode, like I have turned on right now, it just acts as a regular action camera, something like a GoPro or a DJI Osmo Action. And there's a pretty big benefit here because it doesn't require any post processing. And I'll talk about that more in a little bit. However, in steady cam mode, you're not taking advantage of the 360 degree camera. So you might as well just bought a regular action camera at that point. The Insta360 One X2 features flow state stabilization, which is just mind blowing. The stabilization on the Insta360 One X2 is incredible. Okay, now we're comparing the GoPro Hero 9 Black against the Insta360 One X2. It's kind of hard to uh, set these up next to each other because the Insta360 One X2 is a uh, 360 camera. So the GoPro is actually in its shot. <laughs> The reason for this is because the Insta360 One X2 is capturing a huge sphere of imagery. So they can crop in on an area and then kind of move around to compensate for that shake. You can literally throw this thing around and it will look perfectly stable in the footage. It's really impressive. One issue that I've had in the past with the Insta360 cameras is their audio wasn't great. The microphones on the Insta360 One X and the One R just weren't perfect. It was always very shallow, very tinny, but I'm happy to say that the improved microphones on the Insta360 One X2 are a big upgrade. Ooh, another icy section. <laughs> yeah, I almost ate it on that one. And because it's a 360 camera, it does have microphones in four places. So if you have the camera aimed in any direction, it should pick up decent audio. Speaking of GoPro, I've been doing a ton of testing on how these two compare, and really, they're just so different. I think the image quality of the GoPro Hero 9 Black is overall better, and that's because it's a true 5K camera. Whereas the Insta360 One X2, when you crop in, is more like 1080p. So you're definitely not getting the same resolution. However, that really unique perspective of like a micro drone flying around of the Insta360 One X2 is just something totally different. It can't even be compared to a GoPro. It's just next level at that point. And even though it's lower resolution and the quality might not be the same, it's just so different that it like blows people's minds when they see it. Whenever I post content from the Insta360 One X2 to YouTube or Instagram, people are always like, dude, how you do that? And that's what makes the Insta360 One X2 and all of their cameras so special compared to something like a GoPro. There's two ways to edit your footage. You can either use the desktop application from Insta360 or you can use the phone app. And there's a big advantage to using the app. And within the phone app, there's actually two ways to do this as well. You can actually pair it with the camera and edit from the camera right on your phone without downloading the footage first or you can download all the footage to the phone and then edit it as you go uh, on your spare time because you need to keep the camera on if you're doing it the other way around. And editing your clips on the phone are, is really easy. You can simply pan around and you can see me running there and you can insert keyframes for what angles you wanna keep. You can also change from nine by 16 to 16 by nine. You can also go to square mode for Instagram or something like that. And there's a bunch of tools in here. Like you can do a trim, you can increase or decrease the speed if you wanna do a slow-mo sequence. You can add music and filters and all kinds of stuff within the app. It's really cool. One of my favorite tools in this app is something called viewfinder mode, where you can actually use the gyroscope in your phone to kind of be the cameraman for your own footage. Basically by moving the phone around, as you can see, I can reframe frame my shot. And when I have the frame I want, I simply hold the red button here and it will start to play. And as I play it, I can move the camera around and all of that motion's recorded to the footage. And what's awesome about 360 footage is that you can get multiple frames out of one clip. Basically you can have, you know, a frame of you running and then you can flip the view around and have the trail in front of you while you're running. It's really impressive stuff and it's so versatile. You kind of have endless, creative opportunity there. There's also a feature for tracking called deep track. You can click on a person or an item and as the camera moves throughout that clip, it'll keep that person or thing in the middle of your shot the whole time. There's a ton of possibilities here and I really like the app. It's a great experience. It works well. It's really solid. Overall, the Insta360 One X2 is an awesome camera. I have so much fun using this thing. The possibilities are literally endless. You can get so much use out of it. I have one complaint though. The post-processing with the app or on the computer takes a long time. And if you're someone like me who wants to get footage and get it to YouTube really fast, this process can be really cumbersome unless you use that steady cam mode that kind of bypasses all of that. But in that case, you might as well just get a regular action camera because you're not taking advantage of the 360 camera anymore. Basically, every clip that you shoot in 360 needs to be processed in the app and then exported to a usable file. Overall though, I love this camera. I'm gonna be continuing to use it on upcoming projects and YouTube videos. You'll probably be seeing a lot more of it on this channel. And I think you'd probably love it too. And if you are thinking of picking one up, 
I do have links down in the description that do help support my channel. So why not use those if you're gonna pick one up anyway? And of course, if you did find this video helpful, funny, entertaining, please hit the like button down below and consider subscribing so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. Okay, that's all I've got for this one. See you next time. Ooh, another icy section. <laughs> Hope it survived that.